Hello friends, welcome to the course Essentials of Data Science with R Software 1 in which we are trying to understand the basic fundamentals of probability theory and statistical inference. And you can recall that in the last long lecture we had initiated a discussion on the topics of test of hypothesis. And we had discussed uh, different types of concepts, definitions and I tried my best to interconnect them to give you a theoretical background. Now in this lecture we are going to implement them. And now in this uh, lecture, I will try to take up an example where I would try to show you how you can conduct a test of hypothesis for the mean of a normal distribution. And here in this case, I am uh, going to assume that the variance sigma square is known. So if you remember, uh, we had done the similar thing earlier also. So in this lecture, I will assume the variance is known and in the next lecture, I will try to show you. Uh, that how to implement it when the variance is unknown. So, we begin our lecture and I uh, expect that you have taken a good revision of the earlier lecture. Otherwise, there may be some problems, you may not understand couple of things because I am assuming that you have revised the lecture. Okay, so, let us begin our lecture. Okay, so now just for your quick uh, revision, our basic objective is this that we want to define a critical region that means uh, we want to divide the, the, the space of x1, x2, xn into two parts such that in one region I can say the hypothesis is going to be accepted and in another region I can say that the hypothesis is going to be rejected. Right. So, we have critical values which divide the whole area under the probability curve into two regions. Probability curve of what? you will see there will be some statistics. So, uh, so that will be the probability curve of those statistics that may be like t distribution, chi square distribution, f distribution, normal distribution and so on, right. So, one is the critical region or this is also called the region of rejection. So, in this region when the statistical outcome falls then we say that H naught is rejected and the size of this region is alpha. And another is acceptance region when the statistical outcome falls in this region, we say that H naught is accepted and the size of this region is 1 minus alpha. So, now we can have different types of uh, uh, this hypothesis that we can divide them into two types of uh, definition which are one sided and two sided test of hypothesis and then we will try to develop the test. Uh, so, first we try to understand that uh, under what type of condition we can say uh, test is one sided or two sided, right. It depends whether our hypothesis are one sided or two sided and based on that we try to uh, define the critical regions, okay. One thing I can inform you that uh, at this moment uh, I am going to show you that what are the basic fundamentals of the test of hypothesis that how are you really going to implement it using the statistical fundamentals. But surely when you are working in the data science then these decisions are going to be taken based on some software outcome. So, when these rules are implemented over the software then the decision rule become little bit different. The way we try to decide whether the null hypothesis is going to be accepted or rejected that may be little bit different, but it is very important for you to understand what is really happening there and in order to understand that thing you need to understand this basic fundamental that how the critical regions are divided, how do they look in one sided, two sided test and believe me when you will really conduct the test of hypothesis on a real set of data that will be a job of fraction of second that is my promise to you, right. But it is very important for you to understand what exactly you are doing or the software is doing. So, okay, so now let me try to give you an idea about the one sided and two sided test. So, suppose your null hypothesis is like that H naught theta equal to theta 0, where theta is some parameter and theta 0 is some known value. For example, theta can be the mean of a normal population and theta 0 can be some pre assigned value of the mean. 
right. So, and uh, suppose the alternative here is, is h 1 here is theta is not equal to theta 0. So, you, now you can see here, here are, we, we have two options whether theta is less than theta 0 or theta is greater than theta 0. So, that is why this is called as two sided test and you will see that the critical region in this case will be divided in two sides of the distribution also. And similarly, if you try to take here another here a test uh, like as here h naught theta greater than or equal to theta 0 versus theta less than theta 0 or that can, this can also be h naught theta equal to theta 0 versus say h 1 theta less than theta 0, right. These are actually one sided test, right, because you can see here we, we are trying to take the decision only in the one side and the corresponding critical regions are also going to be on the one side of the, the region. And similarly, if you try to take here another option that H naught here is theta is less than or equal to theta 0 and alternative here is theta greater than theta 0, then this is also a one sided test. And you can see here in both the cases, both the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, they are disjoint, they are mutually exclusive, right. So, now what you will see that when we are trying to conduct the two sided test, then the critical region will lie on the both side of the distribution of the statistics. Distribution of the statistics means we are going to find here a statistics which will follow a distribution like a normal chi square t f etc. So, this uh, red line this is going to indicate the distribution of that statistic, right. So, for example, in case you if you are trying to take here two sided test, this is also called as two tail test because the critical regions which are defined here, this region and this region and they are in the blue shade, right. So, they are on the both sides of the distribution on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side, right. So, both these are they are the critical region or the region of rejection and the area in between which is here in the white shade, this is the acceptance region. So, what we try to do that in order to get a good test I can say, we, you try to take the probability of type 1 error as alpha and you try to divide the, it into two parts alpha by 2, alpha by 2 and you try to take the alpha by 2 region on the left hand side here you can see and the alpha by 2 region on the right hand side of the distribution here like this one. And these values which you are trying to obtain here which are trying to partition the total area area under the curve into these three different regions. So, these are the value on the x axis, right. They are called as critical values and if you remember means earlier in the lecture I had used this word critical values. So, these are the critical values actually. So, critical values are simply the values on the x axis corresponding to which they are trying to divide the region into acceptance region and rejection region. Now, similarly if you try to take here the one sided test. So, in this case if you are trying to take the level of significance or the probability of type 1 error as alpha, then in case if you are trying to take a hypothesis like this one h naught theta equal to theta 0 versus h 1 theta greater than theta 0, then the critical region is going to lie on the right hand side of the curve. So, this is the curve of the distribution of the test statistics, right. So, you can see here this blue shaded area is the alpha and the remaining area here is 1 minus alpha. So, this is the critical region and this is the acceptance region, right. So, this is called as upper tail test or right tail test also because the critical region is lying on the right hand side of the distribution. And similarly, in case if you are trying to consider the hypothesis h naught theta equal to theta 0 versus h 1 theta less than theta 0, then the critical region is going to lie on the left hand side of the curve, right. And the size of this area is going to be alpha. So, uh, the, this is also the level of significance that we need to fix before we try to conduct the experiment, right. So, since the critical region is lying on the left hand side of this distribution. So, this is also called as lower tail test or left tail test. So, what we try to do here that uh, we simply try to compute the value of the test statistics and we try to see that in this uh, uh, curve this one or this one depending on the nature of hypothesis where it is lying in the area of uh, region of acceptance or rejection. So, this is for example, here the region of acceptance. Right, and this here is the region of rejection. Now, I would like to have your attention here. In case if you try to see 
what are these critical values? The critical values in both these cases, they are the value on the x axis, which are trying to partition the total area into two parts, right? Such that the area in the upper tail test is alpha on the right hand side of the distribution and in the case of left hand or uh, left tail test, the area is on the left hand side of the distribution. Now, if you try to see what are those critical values, can you recall the definition of uh, quantiles? You are simply trying to divide the total area into here 100 parts and then you are trying to find out here the alpha quantile on the either on the uh, left hand side or you can similarly find out here the 1 minus alpha quantile or in this case you can find out the value of the alpha by 2th quantile right so now either you try to use the table or you try to use the software that is up to you right so but this alpha probability and this critical values these are very easily obtainable from the software so now, what are the steps for test of hypothesis? So in case if you want to test a null hypothesis and uh, that is going to be done by a good statistical test. Good statistical test means where uh, the whether you have the best critical reason or the test is uh, most powerful test or uniformly most powerful test. Uh, that means the test in which the power of the test is maximum, right. So, they are obtained by developing, by fixing the type 1 error and minimizing the type 2 error, because they are obtained by the Neyman Pearson lemma. Although we are not uh, giving here the proof of uh, these tests, but that is the way they have been obtained, either using the Neyman Pearson lemma or the likelihood ratio test. If you want to go into more details, you can pick up any statistics books and you will find such derivations over there, right. So now the first step is define distributional assumption for the random variable of interest and specify them in the form of population parameters. So you need to define here f x theta that whether the population is normal or binomial or Poisson and what are the corresponding parameters in which you are interested. Then you try to formulate the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. How to formulate them? You have now learned that the null hypothesis is formulated in such a way such that the type 1 error is more serious than the type 2 error. And then we try to fix a significance level or equivalently the probability of type 1 error. And then after that, one can use the Neyman Pearson lemma or the likelihood ratio test to develop a test statistic. So, this test statistics is a function which is uh, dependent only on the sample observations and we can obtain the value of such test statistics and we can see whether this test statistics is going to lie in the region of acceptance or rejection, right. So, obviously, when you are trying to conduct different types of test of hypothesis, depending on the test of hypothesis, this test statistics is going to be different. For example, the test statistics for conducting a test of hypothesis for the mean when sigma square is known and when sigma square is unknown, they are different. The test statistics for uh, testing about the variance of the normal population that is going to be different than the test statistic that is used for the mean of the normal population. So, it means we have to somehow construct the test statistics and then we have to find out its value on the basis of observed data and we have to calculate the value of the test statistics. Now, we have to construct a critical region for this statistics t. So, that is the region where if t falls in this region, then H0 is rejected. So, now we are simply going to do one thing that we are going to find out the value of the test statistics on the basis of given set of data and we are trying to just see whether the value is lying in the region of acceptance or rejection. For example, if this is the distribution of t and suppose this is your here critical region and you find out here the value of a small t, suppose a small t comes out to be here. So, this is here the critical value. So, obviously, if this value of t is uh, lying in this region, that means this value is smaller than the critical value, then you are going to accept the hypothesis and if this value lies in the critical region, that means t is greater than the critical value, then you are going to reject the hypothesis as simple as that, right. And then for that, we also need that what is the distribution of t so that we can create this type of curve, right. So, this test statistics follows a certain distribution 
and usually you will see that it is going to be one of the sampling distribution like a chi square t or f or yeah that can be normal also depending on the requirement. So, then what are we going to do? We are simply going to find out the corresponding value of the statistics on the basis of data as well as on the basis of given distribution and then we try to compare them. And after comparison, if the calculated value of the test statistics is going to lie in the region of acceptance, we accept H0. And if the calculated value of the test statistic that is going to lie in the region of rejection, then we reject the H0. So, the decision rule becomes very simple that if Tx that is the value of the statistics on the basis of given sample of data falls in the critical region, then H0 is rejected and automatically obviously the alternative hypothesis is then accepted. The other possibility is that if Tx falls outside the critical region, that means it is uh, lying in the region of acceptance, then H0 is not rejected. H0 is accepted. So, when I say that H0 is accepted, this automatically means that H0 is not rejected as well as H1 is rejected because only one event can occur at a time. Right. So, this is a simple language and similarly if I say that H1 is accepted, that means H0 is rejected. Right. Okay. So, now there is one thing more which is very important nowadays, particularly when you are trying to work with the software in data science. This is p value, small p value. So, this statistical software usually does not follow the steps of the hypothesis testing what I have just explained you, but they are the basic fundamentals. Instead, they try to calculate and report the critical values and uh, they give you the, uh, the, the results, different types of details and they will find out the so called p value. This is the name actually, this is the most popular name. And, uh, they try to use this p value to help us in taking a decision whether the hypothesis is going to be accepted or not. So, in this case we do not need to look into the critical regions, we do not need to look into the probabilities, we do not need to compute the quantiles from the software, but we simply have to look into the p values. What is this p value? This is the estimated probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. Right. So, obviously, if you are trying to have a one sided or two sided case, then this p values can be defined accordingly. For example, for the two sided case, the p value is defined by this probability that uh, absolute value of t is greater than the, uh, the calculated value of the statistics under H0. When I am writing here p and underscore H0, that means H0 is true, that is under H0. This probability will give you the uh, value of p value and in case if you are trying to deal with the one sided test of hypothesis, then the probability that the t that is the statistics is greater than or equal to the calculated value t x on the which is obtained on the basis of given set of data under H0 that is when H0 is true, this probability is called as p value. And similarly, once uh, you are trying to uh, get a left hand tail test, then this uh, probability is defined by t less than equal to t x. Right. So, now what is the decision rule? That is very simple. For a given set of data, the software will compute the required statistics and it will also compute the value of p value. And if p value is less than the significance level that is alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. This is the very simple rule that you have to keep in mind. And what is the significance level? This is the probability of type 1 error that is indicated by alpha. So, always remember one thing, reject the null hypothesis if p value is less than alpha, that is all. Okay, so, now there is another thing, you already have done the confidence interval. So, the decisions about the confidence intervals uh, can also help in test of hypothesis and the decision to accept or reject a hypothesis can also be taken on the basis of confidence interval. Right. So, there is a very useful relationship between the confidence interval and test of hypothesis. So, this is like this that if H0 is rejected at a alpha level significance, then there exists a 101 minus alpha percent confidence interval which yields the same conclusion as the conclusion of the test. So, for example, suppose we are interested in testing a hypothesis H0 theta equal to theta 0. Theta 0 can be mu, mean or it can be variance, sigma square or it can be any function of the parameters. So, the rule is very simple. If confidence interval does not contain the value 
theta naught which is specified then h naught is rejected and that is why you will see that in many of the software instead of giving the p value they also give you the value of the confidence interval and then you have to simply see uh, see whether the value theta naught is lying within the confidence interval or not and based on that you can take a call whether h naught is accepted or rejected Right, now let us try to take a very simple example and uh, with this uh, simple example, uh, I want to show you a couple of things that number one, how are we really going to work and there is a big confusion among the many students. They think that if they try to change the hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis because for example, if I say, say H naught theta equal to theta 0 is the null hypothesis, then the alternative hypothesis can be constructed like H1 theta less than theta 0 or theta greater than theta 0 or theta is not equal to theta 0. So, many times I have seen in my uh, experience that uh, people get confused and they try to think that if they try to change the alternative hypothesis that instead of taking theta greater than theta naught, if they try to consider theta less than theta naught or theta is not equal to theta naught, the statistical conclusions are going to be changed. This is wrong. This is myth. And this is what exactly I want to show you here with this simple example. I will take the same data set and in this example, I will give you in detail that what are the steps involved in the test of hypothesis, how are you going to take a conclusion and this process will be true for all the test of hypothesis that we are going to do in this course and actually you will also learn uh, which are uh, not included in the course also. Right. So, let us like, try to understand this thing and so I am going to repeat the same example three times. So, you have to just understand how the things are happening and you will see that it is not difficult at all provided you understand the basic fundamentals. So, let, let us come to our slides and try to consider this simple example. So, now I am going to consider here an example and through this example I will try to develop the cluster of hypothesis for the mean of a normal population when sigma is is known, right. So, the example is like this. Suppose a survey was conducted uh, 10 years back to know the salaries of the chartered accountants and it was uh, found that the annual salary was rupees 74914. Well, that is a hypothetical value. The salaries of chartered accountants are much, much higher, right. Okay. So, now an accounting researcher want to test and uh, and wants to know what happened after that uh, survey whether the salaries have increased now or they have decreased right so the researcher wants to know whether this average value has increased over a period of years or this average value has decreased or this average value has changed right so now if you try to see depending on the objective you are going to choose the right form of the hypothesis. So, obviously, the null hypothesis is going to be that the average annual salary was 74914 rupees. So, H0 mu will be H0 mu is equal to 74914 and this will remain in the other two cases also. Now, try to look at the question. So, if you try to see here in this question whether this average has increased or not, this can be indicated by the alternative hypothesis that uh, now what is happening that the we are assuming that the salary has increased. So, H1 is mu greater than 74914, right. And similarly, in case uh, if the objective is to know whether this average has decreased, then this can be represented by the alternative hypothesis here H1 mu is smaller than 74914. And in case if uh, somebody wants to test here whether this average has changed change means whether the salary has increased or decreased anything can happen. So, this question can be translated by the alternative hypothesis H1 mu is not equal to 74914. Now, in this case uh, what uh, you have to just keep in mind that when you are trying to take the alternative hypothesis of this type H1 mu is greater than 74914 or mu is greater than say mu naught, then this is going to be a right tail test or upper tail test that you already have understood what are these values. In case if you are trying to take the alternative hypothesis like H1 mu is less than mu naught 
or H1 is uh, mu is less than 74914, then your uh, the test is left tail test or lower tail test and the critical region will lie on the left hand side of the distribution. And in case if you are trying to take here this type of alternative that H1 mu is not equal to 74914, then this will become a two tail test and the critical region will lie on the left hand side as well as right hand side of the distribution. So, so this is what I wanted to show you that how you can construct the, the, the hypothesis and how the tests are going to be affected by that one. So, now what is happening? A sample of 112 chartered accountants has been taken, their uh, annual salaries have been obtained and their average value has been obtained as 78695 rupees. Right. Now, because in this case I want to illustrate uh, the test procedure when sigma square is known. So, we are simply assuming here that suppose the value of sigma is known to be rupees 14530, right. Okay. So, now you see in case if I want to develop a test statistics for conducting this type of test, I need to make some assumption and you will see that here the information or the knowledge that you learned or the topics that you learned during the distribution of test statistics or the sampling distribution chi square tf, they are going to help you. If you do not know, you will have no idea how these tests are coming. So, we are assuming here that sigma is known, population is normal and the sample size is large that is n greater than or equal to 30. Now, I am 100 percent confident that you can uh, understand that what is the meaning of population is normal and what is the meaning of n is greater than or equal to 30. Recall your uh, discussion when we discuss the normal distribution and t distribution for uh, uh, say uh, more than 30 degrees of freedom and this concept I will use once again when I will try to develop the test statistic when sigma square is not known. Right. So, now after this we have to develop the test statistics. So, we try to use the neymar pearson lemma or the likelihood ratio test and based on that the outcome comes out to be that the test statistics is of this form x bar minus mu divided by sigma upon root n. Right. And now you know what is this value. You have used this value many many times in the past and you know that distribution of this quantity here is normal 0 1. So, now what is the rule? You have been given the data. So, from the data you have to simply obtain the value of sample mean. You have to give here the specified value of mu that is mu naught. If my hypothesis is H naught mu is equal to mu naught. For example, in this case, this will be 74914, right? Rupee 74914. And then a standard deviation is given to you, sample size and is given to you. So, you simply try to substitute those values and try to obtain the value of z c. And now, what you have to see that uh, suppose I take here the right tail test like this one. So, this is here the acceptance region and this is here the rejection region and this is here on the x axis these are the value of z c. So, you simply have to see this value which you are trying to obtain here where this lies in acceptance region or in rejection region and that is all. So, this I will try to show you. But anyway, for our test procedure, now what we have to do? We have to fix our level of significance. That means, the, fix the value of alpha. So, usually you will see in practice people are trying to fix alpha is equal to 0.05 or 0.10. And remember one thing, this alpha is the same what you learned in the confidence interval as 1 minus alpha to be the confidence coefficient, right. The reason for uh, fixing this uh, 0.05 or 0.10 was simply because these tables were uh, computed manually. So, they had prepared the table for some collected values of alpha. But now, with the help of a software, you can choose any value of the alpha and this is also called as 0.05 is called as 5 percent level of significance and uh, uh, similarly 0 0.10 that is also expressed in terms of percentage. So, th this is another tradition that we try to uh, express the level of significance in the form of percentage also. Now, you have to simply obtain the critical values. Now, the question is from where are you going to obtain the critical values and for that what you have to do? You have to find the distribution of z c. Now, how to find the distribution of z c? What is the distribution of z c that you already have done? 
that x bar minus mu upon sigma by root and follows a standard normal distribution that is normal with mean 0 and variance 1. So, I can find out the critical values from normal 0 1 that is all right. And for example, in this case if you try to take here alpha is equal to 5 percent then in the case of two sided test the critical values are going to be on the left hand side or on the right hand side and this alpha by 2 will become simply 0 0.025 on left hand side and right hand side both. And if you try to look from the tables, the value on the x axis at which this area is 0 0.025 is minus 1.96 and this area is 0 0.025 it is 1.96 actually that can be obtained because this distribution is symmetric around mean right. So, now what you can see here that this area in between this comes out to be 0 0.95 ok. So, and now here are some values which I have given you that if you try to look from the books you will get these uh, values from there, but anyway means you can compute them uh, directly on the software right. So, these are the values that z lies between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 and so on right anyway. And similarly if you are trying to deal with the alternative hypothesis like h naught mu mu equal to mu 0 versus h 1 mu greater than mu 0, then the critical region is going to be lie on the right hand side and the critical value that you can obtain from the table is now 1.645 because this is the 5 percent area of the total area. So, you can see here when this area is 5 percent this value is 1.645 and when this area becomes half that is 2.5 percent this value will shift to this new value which is obtained here in this case 1.96 right. So, similarly in case if you want to consider the case h naught mu equal to mu 0 versus h 1 mu is less than mu 0 then in this case the critical region is going to lie on the left hand side of the distribution of normal 0 1 and this area is going to be simply alpha this is 0 0.05 and corresponding to which the value on the x axis is minus 1.645. So, these value which I have given you here probability that z is less than 1.645 or greater than 1.645 etcetera they are available in the tables, but you can obtain directly from the software also. Now, how are you going to make a decision? It is very simple reject h naught in the favor of h 1 at alpha level of significance or say 100 alpha percent level of uh, significance. Now, depending on the uh, nature of alternative hypothesis you can take the call. For two scale test you are simply trying to say absolute value of uh, zc that you have obtained on the basis of given sample of data. You can see here this is your here zc right that you have obtained on the basis of given sample of data. So, that is going to be a numerical value just try to see that absolute value of zc is greater than z alpha by 2 or not. If yes then the hypothesis is rejected. In the case of right tail test what you have to see that the calculated value that is zc is greater than z alpha and in the case of left tail test what you have to see that z c is less than minus z alpha. So, simply have to actually see whether the value of z c this is the calculated value of z statistics is lying in the region of acceptance or rejection. And when we try to say accept h naught what is the meaning of this? This means that the difference between the sample mean and the hypothetical population mean is not significant because you are trying to say that here h naught mu equal to mu 0 is accepted that means the difference between the mu and mu 0 is not very high and possibly you can accept it at uh, say alpha level of significant that means you are allowing some error to be there but that error you know how much error can be there right and the difference between the two value can be attributed that it is due to the sampling fluctuations random errors etc right so now what are the steps that we are going to follow so the first step is going to be state your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis compute the value of the test statistics in this case it is zc obtain the critical values for a fixed level of significance alpha and depending on the nature of the test whether it is uh, one tail two tails left tail right tail two sided etc. You can decide the direction of the critical region. Then try to compute the value of z c 
on the basis of given set of data and try to compare it with the critical value. And then you try to make the decisions accordingly. Some useful value of the normal 0, 1 distribution I have given here, but they are means available in all the books and you can also compute them directly on the in the software also. Right. So, now I come back to my this example, this is the same example which I just considered. So, now here I have mu equal to 74914 and then I have taken here 3 possible alternative hypothesis and small n is going to be here 112 and sigma is equal to here 14530. So, now I try to implement all these rules and try to see what happens and how are you going to interpret it. You see once you do the algebra with your own hands manually then you will understand what is really happening. In case if you are getting the value directly from the software, it will be fast, but uh, possibly at least if you ask me, I cannot understand what is really happening. And for mathematics, I always prefer to do the algebra with my own hand on my own paper, right. So, okay. So, now first I try to consider the first example. Has the average salary of the chartered accountants increased? So, in this case, we have this set of hypothesis H0 mu equal to 74914 versus H1 mu is greater than 74914. So, the first rule is, is now compute your here Zc. Now, the value of x bar is given to be here 78695, the value of mu is given here to be 74914, the value of sigma is given here 14530 and small n the sample size here is 112 and if you try to compute it this will come out to be 2.7539. And now in case uh, you try to see the value of uh, Zc from the table that is at uh, 5 percent level of significance the critical value uh, for a right tail test because you can see here this is a right tail test this will come out to be 1.645. So, now you simply have to compute this value of Zc and you have to compare it with 1.645 and you have to see where it lies. So, this computed value is greater than the critical value at 5 percent of level of significance. Why? You can see here this is your here curve and somewhere the critical value here is 1.645. So, this is the area which is the area of rejection and this is the area of your acceptance and now you can see here the value of Zc what you have computed here, this is lying somewhere here. I can use here a different pen, it is lying somewhere here, this is 2.75 and so on. So, this value is lying in the region of rejection. So, I can say here that we reject H0 at 5 percent level of significance in favor of H1. That means, H1 is going to be accepted. Now, the next question is what is the meaning of uh, this uh, statement that we are rejecting H0. What is your here H0? Mu is equal to mu 0 and H1 here is say mu is greater than mu 0. That means, it is indicating that the average salary of the chartered accountants has increased. Right. So, remember this statement that it is giving you a conclusion that average salary of the chartered accountants has increased. Now, we try to do the same thing. We have this uh, hypothesis uh, where H1 is uh, mu less than 74914 and we try to compute the value of here Zc which is again going to, going to be the same value. But now, what we have to do? We have to take the critical region on the left hand side. So, at 5 percent level of significance, the critical value uh, is coming out to be minus 1.645. And now, if you try to see what is the value here for this here uh, Zc, this is 2.7539. So, this is your here acceptance region and this is your here rejection region. So, this 2.75 is lying somewhere here. So, you can see that here in this case, the value of Zc is lying in the region of this acceptance. So, I can say here that in this case, the computed value is greater than the critical value at 5 percent level of significance. So, we accept H0 at 5 percent level of significance against H1. And now, what we conclude? We conclude that the average salary of chartered accountants has not decreased. Now, you can compare the difference between the two statements that average salary of the chartered accountants has increased and the average salary of the chartered accountants has not decreased, right. So, you can say 
that the conclusion is the same. The soul of the conclusion is the same. Now we try to take here the third option. The third option is where we are trying to take the alternative hypothesis to be two sided. Mu is not equal to 74914 and uh, then we try to compute the value of here Zc that will coming out to be the same. But in this case what is going to happen? The critical regions are going to lie on the both hand side. So, in this case this is coming out to be minus 1.96 and here it is 1.96 which are here the critical region. This is here the critical region, this is here the critical region and this is here the acceptance region and now you can see where this 2.75 is lying. This is lying somewhere here 2.75. So, this is lying in the region of rejection. So, now we can conclude here that since the absolute value of this computed value Zc, this is greater than the critical value at 5 percent level of significance. So, we reject H0 at 5 percent level of significance in favor of H1. So, now if you try to translate this statement, this is indicating that we can conclude that average salary of chartered accountants is changed. Right. And if you try to compare this statement with this statement that average salary of the chartered accountant has not decreased or the average salary of the chartered accountants has increased, you can see here that you are getting the same conclusions at least in the soul. And the way you are trying to interpret it that is only changing. Right. So, either you you try to take uh, the alternative hypothesis to be one sided or two sided, the final outcome is the same. So, do not get confused that uh, you are trying to change or you uh, or do not try to conclude if you think that the conclusions are going to be changed. Right. The same thing I can do in a software also, I simply have to compute here the p value and based on that I simply have to compare if the p value is, is coming out to be less than alpha or not. So, alpha here for example, I have taken to be 0 0.05. So, whatever is the value of p that can be computed on the basis of software and we can compare it here. Right. So, remember one thing, reject H0 if this p value is smaller than alpha. That is the simple rule that you are going to follow, but here I cannot show you because I am doing all the calculations manually, but definitely when I try to go to the software, I can uh, show you this outcome. Right. So, now let me try to show you how you can uh, conduct such a test in the R software. So, there is a test whose name is Gauss test here this uh, G here is capital and this is available in the library say compositions. So, this is a library or a package that has been given by the authors of the book compositional data analysis and uh, so we need to install it first. So, we, so try to install the package uh, compositions and then you try to upload it using the library command and after that the command for one sample, two sample this test what we have just done this is the Gauss test is like this Gauss dot test where G is going to be in the capital letters. And then inside parenthesis you can see here there are commands here x, y, mean, standard deviation and alternative. Well, because we are dealing here only with the one sample test, so that is why you can see here in this case y is going to be null. When we will consider the two sample test, then the data about the second sample will be entered in the place of here y. So, in the present case we have the data only for the x. And this here mean, this is the value of mu 0 from H0 mu equal to mu 0 and SD is the value of uh, sigma which is here known and alternative here is like uh, uh, depending on the H1 whether this is two sided or less than type or greater than type. So, you can see here it is very simple. So, now well, let me try to take an example and you can see here this is the same thing which I just explained you right. So, now let me take the same example that I took in the case of uh, confidence interval, right. So, you can compare uh, the, the values which are coming in the case of uh, this confidence interval and through this test of hypothesis. So, in which, so the example was that we have collected a sample of 20 days temperature in a particular city and uh, the population of the uh, temperature is assumed to be normal mu sigma square where sigma square is known to be 36, right. And the 20 values on the temperature uh, is recorded in degree Celsius, right. In this case if you remember we had computed the point estimate mu hat as x bar and that will come out to be 41.97 degree Celsius. So, I try to install this package first compositions and, that, and th then I uh, load it and then the data I have stored in the uh, variable temperature. And now, if you try to see what is really happening, how are you going to give the data here? So, now yeah, I am writing considering here the first test. 
that I want to suppose test H naught mu equal to 30. That means, the average temperature if you try to look here, this data somewhere here is 40, 32, 38, etcetera and we want to test the hypothesis that H naught mu is equal to 30. That means, the average temperature is whether close to 30 degrees or not. So, the alternative I am taking that mu is not equal to 30. So, now I have to give the command here like this Gauss dot test x equal to the temp. Temp is the data, it is not temporary, right. It is temp because you have given the data here as a temp, right. And then y here is null because this is a one sample test. Now, the mean here is 30, this 30 is coming from where? Here. And then what is here this SD? SD is coming from here because in the question it is given that sigma square is equal to 36, right. So, and then alternative is here two sided which is coming from here. But you have to remember one thing, this the way it is expressed you have to follow the same rule. It is within the double quotes two dot sided, right. And if you try to see its output, it will look like this. This will give you the heading, one sample Gauss test, the data here is temp, the value of that Z is statistics, this is that is indicated here as a T, right. Why this is? Because uh, it is trying to calculate uh, something which is similar to the t statistic that we will uh, see in the next lecture. So, this is the value of here x bar minus mu naught upon sigma by root n actually. Then the mean here is 30 as the area is 6 and you can see here now this p value. p value is coming out to be here 1 into 10 power of minus 6 which is much much smaller than the value of alpha if you try to take alpha to be 0 0.05, right. And alternative here is two sided and so you can conclude what is really going to happen. So, in this case the H naught is rejected and this is here the screenshot. I will try to show you on the R console also. And uh, similarly, if you try to take the alternative to be here H1 mu less than 30, then you have to use the same command, but only you have to change the alternative is equal to less inside the double quotes and then you will get here the this type of outcome where everything will remain the same except the p value. Now, you can see here that the, the p value is here 1. Do you think that p value is less than alpha? No, p value is greater than alpha. Alpha is equal to 0 0.05 if you try to take, right. So, in this case try to take a conclusion. So, H naught is not rejected, right. So, here in this case H naught is accepted and this is the screenshot of the same operation. And similarly, if you try to take the alternative here to be H 1 mu greater than 30, then you will have to make only here one change that alternative is equal to greater within the double quotes. Right, and in this case you can see here that uh, p, p value is again coming out to be 1 and here in this case p value is greater than alpha. So, once again H naught is not getting rejected, right. So, this is how you can take the call and this is here the screenshot. And similarly in this slides I have just revised the, the things what I did earlier that if you want to compute the critical values that means you need to find out the quantiles. So, you know that in the case of T distribution the quantiles can be computed by the command QT. In the case of F distribution they can be computed by the command QF and similarly in the case of normal distribution also you can compute them by Q norm. Right. So, and the different types of probabilities you can compute by P norm also. So, I will not go into that detail because I already had done it, but I thought I should uh, at least uh, do it, uh, at least I just inform you so that if you want, you can use it. So, now let me try to come to the R console and try to show you these things on the R console. They are very simple thing, but I just want to show you. So, first uh, let me try to load this library. Well, this library is already in my computer. So, you do not have to hurry for this thing. And now I am entering here the data on the temperature. So, you can see here this is the data on the temperature. And now you try to use this here Gauss test for H naught mu is not equal to mu naught that is two sided you can see here. And you can see here this is here the p value like this one. And if you try to use it for the alternative less than mu naught, then you have to simply change the alternative to be less inside the double quotes and you can get here. These are the values that you have obtained and if you try to just uh, do it for the h 1 mu greater than mu naught, then you have to give the alternative as a greater and you can see here that this is giving you here the p value, right. And it is also specified here that uh, means looking at the outcome also you can decide that what is your alternative hypothesis, 
Right, okay, so uh, now we come to an end to this lecture, but you can see at the end that solving or taking conclusion decisions using the software for the test of hypothesis is very simple. And now you might be wondering that why I have taken such a long lecture for this thing. Do you think that whatever the software outcome you are going to get, can you really interpret it if you do not know these fundamentals? And if you try to learn it that, okay, just try to remember that whether p value is less than alpha or not, but surely that will be the role of a compounder, not of a doctor and we are not here to be the compounder, right. So you can see here that uh, conducting test of hypothesis is very simple. Now onwards, I have to just inform you that what are the required test statistics for different types of job. And after that, you have to just uh, follow the steps either in the software or in the manually using the t values or the calculating the statistic. That is very simple. So, I would now request you try to take some example, but try to do them manually first and try to see are you getting the same conclusion which you are going to get in the software and then try to use the same data into the software also and then try to see whether your conclusion which you are uh, making on the basis of the understanding that is matching with the outcome of the software or not and try to see into the data and try to uh, make different types of comparison. For example, in the same set of data temperature, you can take um, this H0 to be mu is equal to 100 and try to see whether the average is close to 100. Well, the data says the average is close to something around 35. So, try to practice, try to learn more and I will see you in the next lecture with the case when sigma square is unknown. Till then, goodbye.